yeah, so um, <clears throat> I'm getting ready to um, to start my next lesson for uh, for algebra. So I'm gonna need um, I'm gonna need some quiet time. Okay, everybody good with that? Okay, let me just sit down. I'm gonna see uh, what's going. On. Oh wait, what? What are all you guys doing out? Oh my gosh! Oh please, it's time for you guys to go. Jeez, what these things do when I am uh, not around? Okay, guys, <clears throat> we just need to go back. We just need everybody just needs to go back here for a second. Okay, jeez. Oh, you keep wanting to show up. Okay, yeah. Well, uh huh. Yeah, not gonna happen today here. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, hello, Algebra One. Um, I tell you what, when I'm gone, I didn't. I never know what I'm gonna come back to when I sit down at my desk. <laughs> okay, what we're gonna do is level two today. Um, solving quadratics with square roots, level two. So go ahead and take out your math notebook, and we'll jot this down. <clears throat> yeah, I know you want to be in the picture, but you can't. Stay away. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Okay, number one. Looks like this. By the way, I hope that uh, I hope that went well with with you guys. It looks like it did from when I looked at at the delta math. Um, wait, wait, wait. Now, hey, hey, hang on. Go, go. Just move. Okay. There, okay. Good. Good. Okay. Um, here we go. We're going to solve this one. Now you guys are becoming pros at this. So we're going to isolate this part of our equation. First, we need to add 29 to both sides. So we have 2 times 5x plus 1 quantity squared equals, okay, those go away, 29 plus 29 is 48. No, it's 58. Almost made a silly mistake there. These guys are distracting me. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, 9 and 9 and 18 carry the 1. Yep, 58. There you go. Now I need to get rid of this coefficient of 2. So I'm going to divide by 2. So on the left I have 5x plus 1 quantity squared equals. Now 58 divided by 2. Well, oddly enough, that takes me back to 29. Okay, now... <clears throat> what I have on the left side is a square. So to isolate uh, x, I first need to take the square root of both sides to get rid of the quantity squared. I'm left with 5x plus 1 equals. Now the square root of 29 is not a perfect square. So I've got plus or minus the square root of 29. Okay. Now this looks a little unusual, but I'm going to show you how we're going to answer this. We need to isolate x. So I need to subtract 1 from both sides. So 5x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 29. These two cannot be combined right now because here I have a constant. Here I have a square root expression. So I'm going to leave it like that. Now to solve for x, I need to divide by the coefficient 5. So I need to divide by that. So x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 29 divided by 5. That's our answer. Now, that looks a little different. We've not seen an answer like that before. But that is the correct answer using radical form, using square root form. When you enter this <clears throat> on delta math, when you enter your answer, first you're going to put in negative 1, and then you're going to choose the plus or minus option, plus or minus, then you're going to choose the square root option, square root, and then you'll type in 29, and then you'll hit the divide by key, or the slash on your um, laptop, you'll hit the divide by, it's underneath the question mark, question mark, slash, it's that key, so you're going to choose this one, that indicates divide by. And when you do that, it's going to give you a division bar like that. And then you're going to divide by 5. So that's going to be your answer right there. Okay? If you have any questions about how to submit your answer, please feel free always to text me and ask how to submit your answer. Okay, so that's number one. <clears throat> number two. Nine times x squared minus 3, close parentheses, plus 4 equals negative 7. Okay, again, I always zone in on my variable. My variable is right here. 
That means I need to get rid of the 4 and then eventually get rid of the 9. First I'm going to subtract 4. So I get 9 times x squared minus 3 equals negative 11. Now I'm going to divide by 9. And I have x squared minus 3 equals negative 11 ninths. Okay? Now I haven't taken a square root yet, so I don't have plus or minus anything. Okay? Now I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So x squared equals. Okay, now off to the side. I'm going to do a little work here. I need to do negative 11 ninths plus 3. So I need to review my fractions. This is negative 11 ninths plus I need to get a common denominator. So this becomes 27 ninths. 3 becomes 27 ninths. Now when I add those two fractions, I get 16 over 9. So x squared equals 16 over 9. Okay, I'm going to pick it up right here. I'm going to square I'm going to move this off to the side because this was just a little additional work. Here I have x squared equals 16 over 9. Now when I take the square root of both sides, I get x equals, since I'm taking a square root, I have to do plus or minus. Now notice 16 is a perfect square. So the square root of 16 is 4 and the square root of 9 is 3. So my answer is plus or minus 4 thirds. So when I submit my answer, you're going to hit the plus or minus option, plus or minus, and then you're going to put in 4, hit the divide by key, thirds, and it'll give you the 4 thirds. That's your answer. Okay? I'm not sure about if it takes 1 and a third or not. I would just leave it as an improper fraction, to be honest. I would just leave it as plus or minus 4 thirds. Okay? We're going to do two more. There we go. Okay, number three. Four times six plus five x, close parentheses squared, minus 23 equals two. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to add 23 to both sides. I have 4 times 6 plus 5x squared equals 2 plus 23 is 25. Now I'm going to divide by the coefficient out in front here. I'm going to divide by 4. So I have 6 plus 5x. Actually, I don't even have parentheses anymore. Uh, oh, no, I do, I do, I do. Parentheses squared equals 25 fourths. Now, I'm going to leave that as an improper fraction because it doesn't divide evenly. Because my, my brain automatically recognizes, hey, 25 and 4 are both perfect squares. That's probably going to be helpful when I do this problem, and it is. Because now when I take the square root, I'm left with 6 plus 5x equals plus or minus, because I'm taking a square root, the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 4 is 2. So I have 6 plus 5x equals plus or minus 2.5. That I am going to go ahead and make 2.5, because when I divide it out, it's a terminating decimal. Okay, <clears throat> pardon me. Now I'm going to subtract 6. So 5x equals negative 6 plus or minus 2.5. It's helpful to always put this integer, negative 6, in front of the plus or minus 2.5. Now again, we're going to have to divide by 5. So those go away, and x equals negative 6 plus or minus 2.5 divided by 5. Now, since I don't have any radicals, 
like I did back here, I had a radical, so I couldn't simplify further. That was just my answer. It was a square root of 29, which is not a perfect square. <clears throat> here, we did get a perfect square, so we ended up with an expression without any radicals. This is going to give us our two answers. So x equals negative 6 plus 2.5 divided by 5 and x equals negative 6 minus 2.5 divided by 5. Okay? <clears throat> Just so I don't make any arithmetic errors, I'm going to get a calculator out, and I'm going to do negative 6 plus 2.5, negative 6 plus 2.5, and I get negative 3.5, I'm going to divide that by 5, and I get negative 0.7. Now I'm going to do this one over here. I'm going to take negative 6 minus 2.5, negative 6 minus 2.5, and I get negative 8.5. I'm going to divide that by 5, and I get x equals negative 1.7. So my answers are negative 0.7 comma, negative 1.7. Okay, a little bit different, kind of cool. All right, I'm going to do one more with you, and then we're going to be done with the lesson, and I think you'll have enough knowledge to do the delta math problems after we finish number four. Four, parentheses, x squared minus six plus seven equals negative eight. Okay? Now what I'd like you to do is hit pause and then come back and see if you get the answer right. <clears throat> well, what are they doing? Well, they're hitting pause and they're seeing if they can get the answer right. Oh, really? Well, I think I can do this. Okay, why don't you go off to the side and work on your own, see if you get it right. I will. Welcome back. How did it go? Let's see how you did. Well, let's see. Here's my variable. I need to get rid of all this other junk. So I'm going to subtract 7, and I have 4 parentheses x squared minus 6 close parentheses equals negative 15. Divide by 4, the coefficient out here. So x squared minus 6 equals negative 15 fourths. Okay? Now, I'm going to add 6 to both sides. x squared equals. Now again, <clears throat> I don't have a plus or minus yet. I just have two numbers that I'm adding together. So I'm going to review my fractions. So let's just do a little work. I have negative 15 fourths plus 6 over 1. I'm going to get a common denominator of 4. Negative 15 fourths plus, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 4 to get 24 fourths. Now, negative 15 plus 24, well, that's 9. So I end up with 9 fourths. So there was a little, little, a little bit of work off to the side. So negative 15 fourths plus 6 is positive 9 fourths. Okay, now I have x squared. I'm solving for x squared. When you're solving for x squared, plus or minus is the pair. Okay? The square root of 9, that's a perfect square, that's 3. The square root of 4 is 2, so there's my answer. x equals plus or minus 3 halves. And that takes care of it. Okay. All right, I know you guys want to make an appearance. So, is that the correct answer? It is! He's happy with that. He got that. Hey, you, did you get that? Yeah, I got that. All right, way to go. Nice job, guys. Oh, let's just see. Let's just throw in a, hey, way to go. Good job. And I will see you tomorrow. Okay, goodbye, everybody.